Hello, this is Diane from Diane Abroad. The show is In the Know, her podcast show. Um, I'm an international solo nomad, an author, a travel blogger, and a photographer. And I'm here to provide you writing tips, travel tips, and my views of life from savvy and thoughtful to quirky and humorous. The music that you hear, Jazz Infusion Piece, was written for me by Rafael Javadov, an incredible Russian violinist. We thank him for that music, of course. And I hope you enjoy the show. Good morning, Diane here from Amelia Island, Florida. It's the 29th of December, the last few days of 2018. Boy, 2019 is going to be fantastic, I know. Today, I'm going to read to you an excerpt from my book, The Essential Guide to a Life of Travel, The ABCs of International Travel. I'm reading an excerpt entitled Puccini and Luca. While this short true story is about Puccini, it's also about compassion. A small but very thoughtful gesture of compassion that occurred when I was in Luca. First, I want you to know that compassion is the wish to see others free from suffering, according to the Dalai Lama. He also says it's not enough to be compassionate. You must act. All right, let me begin. Again, on my travels, the universe was calling me, and as always, I listened, and I found myself drawn to Luca, Italy, the birthplace of Puccini, the Italian opera composer known as the greatest composer of all opera after Verde. Now, Puccini was born Giacomo Antonio Domenico Michele Zancundo Maria Pacini in 1858. That's my best pronunciation of, it, pronunciation of Italian. Since the 1730s, his family had been tightly interwoven with the musical life of the city, Luca, providing five generations of organists and composers to the Cathedral of the San Martino. Luca's religious heart. I had some knowledge about classical music, just some knowledge about classical music and opera, because I know, don't laugh. I played French horn in high school and junior high. I played in the orchestra from the seventh grade to through my senior year of high school. Although Puccini did not include sections for the French horn in his compositions. We played Bach, Beethoven, Brahms, and Strauss, and I learned to love classical music, but you know, let me digress on that. I also was in the marching band. So in those days, last century, if you played French horn, there wasn't a lot of respect for a girl, for a girl playing French horn. Because when you played French horn, not only did you play in the orchestra, you played in the marching band with this heavy wool, happened to be red, marching band suit, big heavy hat. And no one was interested in in a girl wearing a big heavy red wool marching band suit. Rather, they were interested in the girls with the short skirts who were cheerleaders. Nonetheless, I excelled, <laughs> I excelled at playing French horn. It was in my introdu- introduction to classical music, and I learned to love it. And I hadn't had the privilege of attending a classical concert in a few years, and Luca, this little lovely Italian city, had a Puccini concert every single night in the San Giovanni Basilica just a brief walk from my apartment. Now, I was staying in a lovely Airbnb apartment that had been a convent 600 years earlier, and it still had the original massive steel door and coved red brick ceiling. It was a perfect perch on the second floor with a large window overlooking the food market and the shops on the narrow street below. You know, I felt like I was in a movie, some Italian movie. I was supposed to stay for a week, but it was an incredible spot, perfect for writing, perfect for eating Italian food, and also enjoying Puccini. So I stayed for a full month. 
I bought a concert ticket online for a mere 15 euros and scurried to the church, arriving just a few minutes before curtain. But boy, I tell you, the sight of the rows of simple folding chairs was a disappointment at first because I wanted to see. I'm kind of short, and I knew without risers I would have to crane my neck around the heads in front of me just to get a partial view. I rushed to the front. I peeked around a crowd of white hair couples looking to find the best seats when I saw a single open chair in the very front row. Quickly, I motioned to the gentleman sitting next to the vacant chair, signaling to him, asking him nonverbally if the chair was available. He smiled and nodded and immediately placed his hand on the seat to save it for me. Lovely gesture. I whisked past the couple's still in decision mode, and sat quickly with a simple nod to my gentleman neighbor and ready myself for what I knew was going to be a fascinating 90 minutes. I faced a simple, slightly raised black platform with a gleaming black grand piano. At that moment, when pianist Diago Fiorini, a gorgeous young man in a pristine black tuxedo, with black wavy hair and a perfectly groomed mustache came from behind the curtain. The applause began. The pianist, like a graceful dancer, entered onto the stage, stopped for a momentary bow, moved around to the piano bench, flipped his tux tail, and sat. He began with Puccini's intermezzo from Menor Viscon. The delicate, clear notes filled the air like drops of refreshing rain, enhancing the beauty of this ancient Baroque building. Well, of course, tears welled up in my eyes. I sniffed, but waited for the finish before leaning over to my new gentleman friend and whispering, I forgot my tissue. He reached into the inside pocket of his suit coat for his handkerchief and offered it to me with a smile. No paper. He grinned, shook his head, and motioned for me to accept it. Oh, I said, I'm sorry. Thank you so much. His smile widened. Tenor Mattia Nabiaya took the stage also in a smart tuxedo and sang Puccini's Tasca Visa di Arte. His voice and presence were incredible throughout the performance. And then soprano Clara Polito in a full-length black dress and a soft pink scarf at her neck entered, bowed, and approached the piano, nodding for the music to begin. She sang three pieces, including Benini's Norma Casadiva. Her voice was strong. Her enunciation immaculate bereft of tension, I was transformed. And at the end, my neighbor and I were applauding in sync. We stood and continued clapping until the artists left the stage for the last time. He turned to me and said, wasn't that spectacular? He reached to shake my hand. I'm Barnard. Completely breathtaking, I said. I teared up at the very first note. Thank you so much for giving me your handkerchief. I'll wash it and get it back to you, I promise. I'm Diane Bernard, probably six foot, eight inches tall, was an attorney from Leeds, England. He would be in Lucca for four days. He asked, would you like to join me for a glass of wine? And so we retreated to the nearest bar for Rosso Vino and talked music, Europe, and travel. We laughed and sneered about the crazy 2016 U.S. presidential election and Brexit. Four hours later, when we agreed to meet the next afternoon to walk around the beautiful walls of Lucca, it was comforting knowing it would be lovely to have an interesting companion for a change. That's an excerpt from my book, The Essential Guide to Life of Travel. Bernard had a very small but thoughtful gesture of compassion. A paper tissue is a sort of compassion, but cloth, handkerchief, is another. It's an act of gentle compassion. Where he was concerned about my sniffles, 
just simple thing and gave me that handkerchief. Well, we had a great four days. We went to Barga. I have a blog about Barga and Barnard and I going to Barga. I'll reference that in the notes. So I want you to think about compassion. Compassion when you meet new people. Could be across the street. Could be in a different part of the community in which you live. It could be a different state or it could be international travel. Compassion is what brings us all together. Whether you be compassionate or someone is compassionate toward you. It's about the act of compassion. Thank you so much for listening to this podcast, to this episode of In the Know. I look forward to seeing you again on the podcast, and I look forward to seeing you again in 2019. Thank you again. This is Diane from In the Know Podcast Show, signing off with this lovely music written for me by Raphael Javadov. See you again next time on the podcast. Bye-bye.